Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. I'm Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. It's great to see everybody here. Thank you for joining me today. Just readjusting my chair. <laughs> As you're jumping on, say hi and let me know that you're here. So while I'm waiting for everyone to jump on, I'm just going to bring this up on my iPad so I can see all of your comments. Okay. Oh, that's easy. It tends to pop up on its own now, which is fantastic. Hi, Tina. How are you going? Hi, Rose. Great to see you here today, ladies. How was your weekend? Let me know. Have you been doing some craft over the weekend or been doing some other exciting things? Let me know. <gasps> Hello, my lovely lady, Tina Marie. Great to see you today. Hi, Roslyn. Great to see you as well. Thank you for joining me. I have got um, a lovely little project to show you today. So it's um, a stamp set that's out of the annual catalogue. And uh, I haven't actually had a play with it yet. I had, I've had it for a little while, but um, I've got quite a few stamp sets up on my shelves up there that way. <laughs> Um, that I haven't used yet. You might notice there's a few that are pulled out slightly. That's so that I know they're the ones I haven't used yet. So it will remind me to pull them out and have a play with them. So, um, oh, good to hear, Tina. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm just really tired today. So if I'm a bit dark under the eyes, that's why. Our little Molly woke me up very early this morning. And um, yes, so I'm a little bit tired because I went to bed really, really late last night. Well, early hours of this morning, had planned to sleep till a particular time, but Molly heard me up and then woke up. So then she wanted to come to me. And then, of course, I took ages going back to sleep and then went back to sleep. And then she woke me up again and she needed to go outside to the toilet. So for those of you that don't know, Molly is our little Shih Tzu. She's our little baby, our little home doggy. And um, she, she's actually doing very well. For those of you who have been following her progress, she's been very unwell lately, but she's actually doing really well at the moment. Um, her test results that she had from the needle aspiration came back inconclusive, although they did see on the ultrasound that she had a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, getting croaky, a mass, or they were saying it's a tumor um, on the outside of her stomach, attached to the wall of her stomach. But then the test results came back inconclusive, so that may mean that they didn't gather enough um, or they couldn't harvest enough cells, etc. Um, and all of those things. So they want to do exploratory surgery, um, but we've said no to that because she's been through enough and um, we just don't feel that she'll cope with it. And then they wanted to do a second surgery to remove whatever is there. So we've just said no, we will just manage her symptoms, keep her... Um, as well as we can for as long as we can. But she's actually bounced back really well and she's better than she's been in many months actually at the moment. So that's really good. She's eating well um, and she's really happy. Been playing, even been running. Um, she's old, she's 14 and a half, so she doesn't run a lot. But when she runs, she runs really fast and then she'll do like a quick little run and then that's enough. Then she has to go in her bed and have a sleep. <laughs> so... <laughs> bit like all of us as we go to old, isn't it? <laughs> we don't run as much as we used to. Actually, I don't run at all anymore. <laughs> I walk fast, though. <laughs> uh, so let me know, what have you all been up to, ladies? So tell me, tell me, have you been crafting? Did you do something special on the weekend? I know some of you are footy lovers, so did you watch the footy game? I'm not, but I know a lot of you are, so that's okay. So let me know and um, how did you enjoy the game? So share with me your stories. Can they not just do one surgery, remove the mass and test it, then test it? Um, well, they said that they wanted to do exploratory surgery first to see what's there, how big it is. Um, and to determine exactly what it was before they then booked her in for the major surgery because I think the major surgery would be a really long surgery um, and they said that it would be two surgeries they didn't give us the option of it just being one so we said no um, 
they are assuming that it is cancerous because they talk to us about chemotherapy and things like that but she's just not strong enough she's um you know and she's very old even from the needle aspiration that she had she was in absolute agony um for a good 48 hours after that and she took a while to recover even from that so we don't want to put her through anymore she's um she's been through a lot a lot and recently just before that a couple of weeks before that she had her teeth all done because we thought that might have been the issue why she wasn't eating um but um yeah so she had four teeth pulled and a couple of lumps in her mouth cauterized and all sorts of things so she's been through the ringer lately poor little thing but thankfully she's doing really well at the moment she's a tough little thing for her size yeah it definitely would be a lot of trauma to her tina yeah she just she wouldn't cope she doesn't cope well with medications or with anesthetic um she yeah she just she doesn't cope well at all so um yeah but at the moment she's doing well so that's good and she's eating and as long as she's eating she's not vomiting she only vomits when she doesn't eat so no vomiting for a few weeks now which has been great so hey chitska i can see you've just jumped on as well great to have you here so yeah so um nobody's telling me about their weekend maybe you all had a really quiet weekend did you I actually um, spent time in my craft room tidying it up, tidying it up again. Um, those of you that um, have been following me recently will know, well, have been seeing my posts recently and watching my lives. Um, I recently had a big revamp of my craft room and um, it was looking beautiful, beautiful and tidy and everything. And then Molly got sick. So of course, while she was sick, it went to rack and ruin. <laughs> And there was stuff everywhere and I didn't have time to put things away because I was looking after her. Um, but I spent time on the weekend just uh, tidying it all back up again, rearranging a few more things. And I've ordered a couple of um, storage um, compartments. Actually, let me tell you about that. I'm using some of the um, Stampin' Up! storage. So let me find it here in my catalogue. Um, does anybody else use the Stampin' Up! storage? So on my craft desk, I've got two two desks in my craft room now. I'll keep talking while I'm looking for it. Um, I've got two desks in my craft room now. I've got my crafting space and then I've got my workspace. So I've got my work desk over to my right-hand side from where I'm sitting, so over under the window. And that's where I do all my business work, computer work, book work, all of that sort of thing. And then when I'm creating, I'm sitting here at this desk. So at the back of this desk, here we go, at the back of this desk, um, probably three quarters, oh, yeah, probably almost three quarters of the desk is all my Stampin' Up! storage. So I've got all my inks and my pens and my Stampin' Blends, my adhesives, my daubers. Um, what else have I got there? I've got some washi tape, which I use from time to time. Um, all sorts of things stored there behind me. And so if you have a look, if you've got um, the annual catalog on page 145, you'll see the stamp and storage. I wasn't planning on talking about this, but why not? Um, you'll see the stamp and storage. So, sorry, trying to get that reflection from the lights off that. So you'll see there's all different combinations that you can get and you buy them in like a modular, um, in modular sets. And then you can put, put it together however you like. So I've got a whole heap. I've got a combination of all of them, actually. And um, they are so fantastic. Everything is just within arm's reach. It's really neat and tidy. Uh, I love having everything organized. So I've just ordered two more of the open ones. And I've ordered um, some toppers and some lids because I've, I'm doing different configurations. So I've ordered two more for my craft desk here because I've got room for just two more because then um, my daughter has got her cutting machine there. She's got a big, um, uh, an electronic cutting machine that she uses for her um, crafting. And then I'm, I'm putting um, four of them stacked two on top of each other over on my business desk and I'm going to be storing bits and pieces in there over on my my um, work sorry my work desk not my business desk my work desk so yeah so I've ordered six more um, you can get the little toppers where things I'll show you I'll take one off hang on a minute can I lift that off oh yep 
So the little toppers are like this. And so you can actually store stuff sitting up inside them. This one actually had all of my spare dimensionals stacked inside of it. So they sit nicely in there. I've got another one with all my glue standing up inside it. You can stand your um, um, ink refills in there, all sorts of things. And then you can also get some flat lids. So I've also got some flat lids for some of my other, um, I've actually got some currently for my open, what are the open ones called? Open, oh, it's called Open Storage Cube. And um, I've got some ink pads and my daubers in my dauber cases sitting on top of those ones as well. Um, so yeah, so you can do all different configurations. They're really, really cool. So yes, I've ordered some more of those. So got more organization happening. Now where's my little, so the little front part has got Stampin' Up on it. So you know which is the front and it just sits on top and helps to let's see if I can get that back on now oh yeah that went on good and it helps to stabilize the whole thing so you can stack them up um, I've got three lots for my Stampin um, Stampin blends but they can go um, higher than that too just have to be careful not to go too too high or it can come become a little bit unsteady because um, obviously you probably wouldn't want to go more than well there's five I think for the Stampin' Blends, it comes in a pack of five. Yeah, there's five trays for the Stampin' Blends. So I've got three. I would probably go one more set of five, but I probably wouldn't want to go higher than that because it would be very tall and, you know, it's fairly narrow, so you wouldn't want it to be too wibbly-wobbly. But, um, but yeah, they, they're really, really great. <laughs> Tina Marie says she's waiting for Stampin' Up! to bring out a spare room for storage. <laughs> <laughs> love it yeah if only i if only <laughs> uh, oh okay i'm just catching up on all your comments now um oh thanks tina yeah it is good that she's feeling better um we'll see how she goes and just take it each day as it comes so, oh hi rose how are you i just saw that you're with me as well you caught up with your family your sister-in-law has had a knee replacement oh ouch Poor thing. I hope she recovers well. It's always lovely to catch up with family. And, oh, Rosalind's got some of the storage. Awesome. Need some more? Yeah. And the good thing is with the stamp and storage is you can keep adding on to it as well. You can go up, you can go out, um, depending on your configuration. So it's really, really, they're really, really great. I'm so glad that Stampin' Up! brought them out. Um, does the ink holder hold the old as well as the new? No. So the um, the the ink pad and marker storage trays they actually only fit the new current. Well, not that they're new now, but the current stamp classic stampin' pads. They don't fit the old ones. The old ones are much higher, much deeper. Um, and they're just a bit too high and then the the shelves don't stack on top of each other But they were designed for these current ones. So sadly. No, I'm sorry. They don't fit the old style. They also don't fit the um, Memento or the stays on because they're a different shape and they they are higher as well so you'll see Hopefully you can see they sit a little bit higher so they're just a um, a little bit too high actually let me just check I think I've checked them before I'll just double check yeah they're just just a tad too high so they are designed for just the the classic stamp and pads the current ones um, oh hi Alison great to see you let me put my ink pad back over there great to have you here with me today oh Sharon's here too hi Sharon great to see you all right, so um, I, I want to really get started on to our project today, but just very quickly before I do, um, now that we've finished talking about storage, but yes, I highly recommend the storage. It's fantastic and gets everything all neat and organized in one place. It's great. Hey, Lisa, great to see you as well. All right, so I want to just quickly tell you about our designer series paper sale. So Stampin' Up! has got this um, designer series paper sale running. It's been running since the 1st of October 
and it ends on the 31st, which is Saturday. So there's not many more days left. And in the sale, hang on, I have to go this way. In the sale, yeah. <laughs> there's 15 packs to choose from, 15 different designer series papers that are on special 15% off. So um, I just ordered some more last night, but don't tell Amber. <laughs> She's like, Mum, you don't need any more. But there was one particular one that I really wanted and um, I'm looking at designing a class with that one. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to get it. It's on special and I get my demonstrator discount on top of that as well. So I thought, why not? So I did. So check that out. Um, the designer series paper sale, 15% off. So there's some papers from the annual catalogue and some papers from the uh, mini catalogue. It's not everything. It's a select um, a selection of papers, but there's 15 different packs to choose from, or you can get them all, grab a big bargain and save yourself a lot of money. So look out for that. Um, okay, so another couple of very quick things before we start. Um, we've got our curvy celebrations. Now this one is um, a pre-release a pre actually of the mini catalogue and and I'll just show you yeah that's the one there so this one um, is going to be available from next Tuesday and I'm planning on playing with this one next week on my Facebook live so if you want to see what I create come back again next week um, so these two up here can be purchased together as a bundle now they're going to be available I'm looking over at my notes so I make sure I tell you the right thing they're going to be available um, in the new mini catalog that's going to be coming out in January. So we're actually able to order them from no the 3rd of November. Now these two that coordinate with them, this is the um, Kirby Christmas stamp set and the classic Christmas designer series paper, which is six by six. These two are going to be available as well from the 3rd of November, but these ones are only available until the 4th of January. Um, because of course they're Christmas themed so then they won't be available after that but these two will actually be carried over into the mini catalogue so if you want to get some new product from the new mini catalogue before the mini catalogue even comes out they'll be available next Tuesday so look out for those ones now also we've got something else releasing next Tuesday as well and it is another paper pumpkin which is a global paper pumpkin um, and it's the Joy to the World paper pumpkin. So it's going to be a Christmas card making kit. If you're not familiar with paper pumpkin, paper pumpkin is a subscription in North America. So every month um, people there can subscribe to get a box of goodies to make some beautiful projects. It comes with instructions, it comes with an ink pad and some um, uh, all the elements and the card bases and everything to make different um, cards that you can uh, either has this um, exclusive um, getting my tongue tied slow down exclusive stamp set as well that comes with the kit and um, just last year Stampin Up put out the very first global paper pumpkin kit and this year we've had two so we've had the box of sunshine just recently and now we're going to be having the joy to the world so it's super super exciting I can't wait to get my hands on that so I'll be ordering some of those next Tuesday so look out for that um, we don't yet have the image of what the cards are going to look like by the way so we own that's why I'm showing you just the box um, but yeah, it'll be really exciting. Now I think this one is going to be $37 from memory. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who's watching who knows. Pretty sure it's $37. This one doesn't come with a block. So if you don't already have a clear block to mount your stamps onto, you might just need to grab a block as well. And the reason it doesn't have a block is to keep the price down for people. So I'm sure it's gonna be beautiful. So um, look out for that one next week. All right. So, oh, I'm just catching back up on some comments again. Um, hey, Lisa, great to see you. Oh, you've got the old stamp pads. Yeah, they don't fit in that. What you can do though, Tina Marie, is the open, um, the open storage cubes. You can get a few of those, 
because they will stack up in those as well. So you can actually stack them up in them because they're open. Um, you can stack them up in those and then I just put, I just stack a few of those on top of each other. Well, I've got two at the moment because then I've got a shelf. So um, you can, f I've got some, I've got my old, um, I've got a couple of my old ones just there that I use as a, a backup. And I've got a couple of them stacked in there as well as my um, stays on ink pads. I've got them stacked in there as well because they don't fit in the other um, the ink storage ones. So I just keep them in my open ones. So yeah, so you can use it that way too. Um, and then if you have the little toppers to put on top, you could put all of your um ink refills in there or your little ink spots you could store them in there in the little um, topper trays or you could store your adhesives or all sorts of things yeah so they're really cool um okay so we oh hey athena i just saw that you popped on as well great to see you um do do do, do, do. we should do another live stamping again together again like we did for world stamping day yes tina i am going to be having an event coming up with the um joy to the world paper pumpkin kit so watch out for that i haven't announced i haven't um advertised it yet but there will be something coming up um next month for that so watch out for that because i will be doing something special again which will be a lot of fun um i also will be um advertising very soon for my November class. So my November um, product class is going to be held on the 14th of November at this stage. So um, yes, I need to get my skates on and get that advertised very soon. And we just had my technique club on Saturday and I have that every month on the fourth Saturday every month. And um, the one we just had was focusing on Stampin' Blends. So some tips and tricks with Stampin' Blends, um, some different techniques in using them, um, combining colours and all sorts of things like that. And we made um, two beautiful projects and then we had a sample card that we made as well, which goes into our um, technique notebook to keep samples of all, the, all of the techniques. So yeah, so that was um, really good. That was a really great class. And um, hopefully those that, because um, obviously at the moment it's all online. So I'm still waiting to hear back from some of the ladies how they went. And um, yeah, so it's, it's really, really good each month to be able to learn a new technique. So, okay. Now, let me just go back in the catalogue to what we are going to be playing with today. So today we are going to be playing with, pay on page 48, the Basket of Blooms stamp set. So as I said, I've had this one for a little while, had my eye on it since the catalogue came out. I got it recently. Well, I got it a little while ago, but I hadn't used it yet. So we're going to be playing with that one today. Um, so let me turn the camera down to my desktop and we'll get started. All right. So just bear with me for a moment. I'll cover up the camera. I'll flip all my cameras and... I'll adjust everything. Oh, it's a bit squeaky today. Okay, make sure my clamps are done up nice and tightly so we don't fall down. Actually, I think that's got to come out a little bit further. Just a moment. Otherwise, we're not going to be over the desk. There we go. I think that's better. Okay. Right, let's see how that's looking. I'll just put my tape up there. Okay, good. We are up the right way <laughs> and around the right way. So we'll just go over this way a little bit and get everything all lined up. So if you would like to shop with me, um, you can shop, find my online store via my blog. My blog is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com 
and um, if you go there to my blog you can click on the shop button which is at the top on the right hand uh, sorry on the left hand side when you go into my blog you'll see that there also too if you would like to subscribe to my monthly newsletter well actually it's not just a monthly newsletter sometimes I put out additional um, newsletters as well if there's um, specials or something that I want to highlight I put out additional newsletters so if you would like to um, subscribe to my newsletter you can click on the big subscribe button which is on the um, top right hand side and then you'll be sure to get all of my emails when they go out okay so um, if you're shopping with me remember to use my host code every month there's a new host code and this is my October host code so that'll be changing um, at the beginning of November and then for orders over $50 you will receive or every order receives a thank you card from me and orders over $50 will receive um, a thank you gift as well now I'm still trying to get this mat in the right spot I feel like my camera is a long way over today compared to where it normally is so let me just shuffle I'm just going to shuffle this over it might just bump for a minute hang on a minute there we go I feel like that was over a little bit too far today I've been moving my camera my um my camera stand around a little bit lately because I've been filming videos and things like that so um it gets a little bit out of whack because I'm constantly moving it okay all right so basket of blooms this is a really beautiful stamp set um, this is a photopolymer stamp set and it's got 14 different stamps in here so quite a lot of different stamps in this stamp set and um, I love that there's different types of flowers so you've got a standing up flower there and then you've got two of these um, flowers which coordinate with the punch so it does have a punch that coordinates with it and this is the um, small bloom punch that coordinates with these two flowers here and then you've got the basket, you've got the, um, the pot and the vase. So you've got lots of um, options there. And then you've got all the leafy parts as well. And then you've even got this little bow that you can put around the, um, the pot. Or perhaps you could string it from the basket there. So I just think it's really, really versatile. There aren't any sentiments with this one though. So, um, but you can use any sentiments that you already have. Uh, yeah so we're going to to do that now today um, I'm going to be also using the um, Suttles 6x6 designer series paper so um, as you can see I've already chopped into mine but this designer series paper comes in all the different color ranges so we've got the Suttles the Regals the brights and the neutrals and then there's also the in colors as well and there's different patterns on these so there's um they're double-sided of course so you end up with four different patterns um, of each of the colors in the color range so of course there's 10 colors in each of the color ranges except for the in colors so we've got the um two lots of five different in colors and you get a total of um, 40 sheets. So you get four of each of the sheets, uh, four of each color. So you get two of each pattern, which are double-sided. So yeah, so lots and lots of paper and they coordinate beautifully with all of the inks and the cardstock and the pen, the markers, um, stamp and blends, etc., etc. Um and then I've pulled out a few stamp sets with sentiments in it, which I'm not sure which one we're going to use yet. I've got a whole stack of ribbons out to choose from, and I'm not sure which ribbon we're going to use yet because I haven't made this card yet. We're going to be making it together. Um, and I've got a, all my embellishments. Well, not all of my embellishments. I've got a few that I thought would coordinate here as well. So also today, we are going to be using some of our watercolor pencils now I keep my watercolor pencils in a pencil roll which um, my friend made and she she um, she makes these and there's some these are my samples of my watercolor pencils which I keep in my little pencil roll 
and so I keep all of my watercolors in here but of course they do come in boxes and there's two sets um, now I'm just thinking I didn't mark the page that they were on actually so let me find them do to do to do, do where are we coloring tools here we go they will be somewhere in here with the coloring tools oh here they are they're they're on page 144 under assortments assortments and bundles so the watercolor pencils come in the original set and then the assortment too so i have both sets but i don't keep them in the boxes as i said i keep them in this this paper roll because for me this is really great when i um, go traveling um, so we're going to be using a few colors from each of these i think um, let me just see actually no i think we're using colors from the original pack yeah so the original pack has got 13 pencils in it and the assortment pack has got 10 additional colors okay so the original pack is 27.75 and the assortment two is 21.75 because you've got less colors in that one but yeah so together you've got lots and lots of colors there um, as I said, I like to keep mine in rainbow order. So I've got my two packs combined and then I've got some of my coloring tools here as well. I've got some blender pens um, and I've got some water painters here as well. So I've already pulled out the colors that we're going to be. How cute is this? Let me just show you. I chose this fabric. My friend showed me what fabric she had and um, this is the one that I chose. But how cute is it? If you want to know about these pencil rolls, let me know and I can hook you up with um, my friend Fee who makes these. I actually asked her to design this for me and um, now she's gone on to sell a whole heap of them, which has been fantastic. So mine was the um, prototype. Well, actually, I think she made a prototype before she made mine, but then she's made modifications since then again. So, so I'll just tie that up. I love my little owls. All right, so um, the colors that we're going to be using today, as I said, I've pulled them out. So we've got Balmy Blue. Oh, sorry, not Balmy Blue, Bermuda Bay. We've got Pacific Point, Early Espresso, Melon Mambo, and Old Olive. And then I've brought out one of our new water painters. Now our water painters that we have now, there's um, new ones out now that we that came out with the new, um, annual catalog, the 2020 to 2021 annual catalog. And um, they come in the a pack of three with the three different tips. So you've got the, um, the two brush tips, a broad tip and a fine tip, uh, sorry, a thicker tip and a thinner tip and then you've got this broad brush as well sorry I've been using mine this morning so it's it's feathered out a little bit um, yeah so you, they come the three of them come together in a pack which is fantastic and this one here I use this one all the time for um, sealing my envelopes so you know where you get the sticky bit on your envelope well at the moment with corona of course we're not licking them and I probably never will again because they taste disgusting anyway, but we don't want to spread our germs to people. So this one here is great for running along that sticky part on your envelope to seal your envelope without licking it. And then it's hygienic. So I use this one all the time. All right, so let's pop that one away. Oh, I put back the one that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using the thick brush today. We're going to be using a basic gray stamp pad. Now, we're going to, because we're using water coloring, um, and as I said, I haven't done this before, but I have pre-stamped some images, um, but I'm going to show you how to stamp them. But I have pre-stamped them just to allow that ink to dry really well before we start water coloring. Um, so when you're water coloring, obviously the, the ink is water-based, so it is going to blend down a little bit as well and soften. So it's sort of going to be a little bit like the, um, the no-line watermarking, but not quite to that extent because we're using a, a deeper color. If you're using the no-line watermarking technique, you'd use a lighter color like a Sahara sand or a crumb cake. 
um, but you can use if you want a black if you want a really heavy black outline um, stays on ink would be great to use if you're doing watercoloring um, oh hi Donna great to see you I'm doing well thank you a little bit tired so I'm a little bit croaky today but aside from that I am well so yes yeah, so there are the options um, if you're doing watercoloring I wouldn't suggest using memento ink because it will um, bleed with watercoloring all right so we are going to be um, using some so saffron now so saffron isn't a color I really like it but it's not one <laughs> you're tired too <laughs> um, did you have a big weekend Donna uh, I had not much sleep I had I was working all weekend and then I got woken up early this morning by my dog when I was planning to sleep in so yes I got up too early <laughs> um, so yeah so saffron is not a color I use often but I do really like it so I thought you know what I'm going to use it today um, so we've just got half of an A4 so um, then we just fold that in half so then that measures at um, 10.5 by 14.45 uh, 14.85 then we've got a piece of oh and i've just smudged i don't know what i had on there something on there on my whisper white piece i'll have to flip that over had something on my hands um you've been prepping for your retreat and busy with work things oh yeah not enough time in the day i know there never is enough time in the day is there <laughs> never seems to be all right, so we have got a piece of the um, the Subtles 6x6, as I mentioned before, 6x6 designer series paper, and I'm using the polka dot side. On the other side is sort of like this crosshatch um, distressed sort of side, which is awesome, but it, it sort of didn't stand out as well, I didn't think, on the So Saffron. If we had a white base, it probably would stand out beautifully, but because I was putting it so it's so saffron and I'm putting it on so saffron. So color on color. Um, it just didn't stand out as much as the polka dots. So we're going to use the polka dot side. And this one is measured at 13 point, oh, sorry, 9.3 centimeters by 13.7 centimeters. And then we've got a piece of whisper white, which is what we're going to be stamping on. So I'm keeping it really simple today, really simple layers, easy layout. We are going to be doing a little bit of masking though so i'm going to show you how to do that but this piece is thick whisper white because we're doing water coloring with our watercolor pencils i thought thick whisper white will work best so this is 7.2 centimeters by 11.6 centimeters now because i had cut it um, that way with this side up this is the side i've just put a mark on with my fingers i'm going to turn it over but I've got a little bit of a ridge around the edges there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my bone folder just to run along the edges to smooth them down. And then that just flattens them right down. There we go. Sometimes with our trimmer that happens, and particularly if you press hard, which I tend to when I cut, and I get that little bit of ridging on the underside. So there we go. So that's perfect now. All right, so we're basically going to just be layering up like that. It's going to be really easy with our layers but let's um, go ahead and do our stamping so you're also going to need some additional scrap cardstock to um, stamp some flowers on because we're going to color them and then punch them out and i have done some ahead of time but this was just a scrap and i've got another scrap here as well that i've just gone ahead and just stamped a whole heap of the little flowers now remember with your photopolymer stamps and i do try to remember uh sorry i do try to remind people um each time when you have a new stamp set as mine is um it's always a good idea to clean your stamps before you use them the first time especially with the photopolymer stamps because they do carry a little bit of um the uh, a bit, little bit of a film on them from the production of them and so sometimes they don't pick up the ink as well so it's a great idea to give them a clean so if you have a stamp and chamois you can use your stamp and chamois to give them a clean just give them a really good scrub on that chamois because the chamois just is wet with water but what i like to do 
is I do like to use when my stamps are brand new and after they've had heavy, whoops, sorry, after they've had a lot of heavy use, such as for classes, is I do like to use my stamp and scrub. So your stamp and scrub is double sided and it's got this um, fuzzy mat inside it, which gives the stamps a really deep clean because the fibers that are in these little mats get in between all the nooks and crannies of your stamp and they give it a really good clean. So it's got the two sides, and what is a good idea is to have one side as your wet side, so you notice that I've got mine labeled, and the other side as your dry side. So what I do is I use a little bit of Stampin' Mist. So the Stampin' Mist comes in a large bottle now, but I just um, fill my little bottle up because that's handier for me. And I just squirt a few squirts of my Stampin' Mist on my wet side. Then I rub my stamp onto that and you'll see that it will foam up a little bit as well. So you'll know that it's in there. And then dry it off on your dry side and then you're ready to go. And then I usually give it a, just a little tap on the paper just to be sure that I've dried it completely. And these mats in here, they do come out. See how there's a little cutout here in each of those corners? They do come out and then you can take them out and wash them when they become really inky, particularly the wet one that's going to be um, picking up most of the ink. Um, and up in the top corner as well, there's a little imprint in the plastic that actually has some little water droplets. So you can make sure that that's always your wet side, or you can do what I've done and just label it on the outside wet and on the other side dry. So when you open it up, you always know which side is which. And then these are great, these last forever, these, these Stampin' Scrubs. Um, but yeah, so the Stampin' Scrub and the Stampin' Mist, they are great to have. And they give your um, stamps a really deep clean. If you're just doing uh, a light stamping and you just need a really light clean in between times, you can just use your Stampin' Chamois. But if you need a really deep clean for your stamps, then um, or when they're brand new, then the Stampin' Scrub is a great idea. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is, so I've got my stamps mounted up. We're going to be using, I'll show you on the um, packet because it's a bit hard to see with the photopolymer stamps. So we're going to be using, first of all, the pot, then this leaf, leafy one here, um, this flower here, which has got sort of, it's a bit lighter. The other one's a little bit of a heavier flower with a heavier detail. So we're using the lighter one there. And then we're also using the, um, the string around the pot as well. Okay. Um, we also need some sticky notes. So we need some sticky notes because we're going to be doing some masking of the pot. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So let's go ahead first. Well, actually, let's do that first. Let's do that bit first. So bring in our basic grey. Yes, uh, oh, um, the stays on cleaner is not recommended for photopolymer stamps, Tina Marie, just to let you know. Um, Stampin' Up! doesn't recommend it for photopolymer stamps because it's quite a, quite a harsh cleaner um, and over time it can break down the photopolymer. So it's not recommended for, um, that's not to say I don't use it on photopolymer, but um, I try not to use stays on, on my photopolymer stamps too often um, just because I, do, I don't want to break them down. So that's Stampin' Up's recommendation. I do do it sometimes, but I try not to do it too often. So, yeah. All right. So um, I'm just going to stamp one of the pots onto a sticky note and I'm going to stamp it up near the top so that... I've got some of the sticky part under the top of the pot. All right, and I'll leave that out because we're going to use that in a minute. Then what I'm going to do is I am just, whoops, I'm just going to cut out that pot. Very easy to do. And I'm going to cut it on the line. So cutting it on the, on the stamped line and being really careful to cut it exactly where that stamped line is. And I'll show you why in a moment. All 
And let's just get rid of this bit that's getting in the way. All right, so just go around this pot and back up that side. Okay, there we go. So now we've made a little mask. This is what we call a mask. And I'll show you how we're going to use that in a moment. We'll just pop that over to the side for the minute. All right, so we are going to stamp our pot. Now we want to leave a bit of room underneath for a sentiment. So we'll start with our pot. I'll bring my ink in. So I'll leave a bit of room at the bottom there for a sentiment. And we'll stamp it about there. Now I just realized I'm not using my um, piercing mat underneath, which I should be using. It's another good tool to have when you're working with photopolymer stamps because it gives you that little bit of cushioning underneath your stamps. So I'll just pop that down. All right, now we've got our pot stamped. We want to stamp our leaves, but you'll notice that the leaves are really big. Now, if I just stamp that down like that, the leaves are going to be going, the, the stem of the pot is going to be going across the front of the pot and we don't want that. That will look ugly and it won't look like they're coming out of the pot. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask off the pot. So now with that little bit of sticky at the top of that sticky note, we're going to pop our little mask down on top of the pot that we've just stamped. Okay, so now that is masked off. So now we can go ahead and stamp our leaves. Let me move this over. I keep moving this ink pad. So I'm going to stamp this one up a bit higher and sort of going out a little bit to the right hand side. There we go. And then we'll stamp one on the left side. Going out this way and I want this one to be a bit, little bit lower but I'm watching where that stem is to make sure that stem is still on the mask. Now can you see why I put that mask there? See how the stems have stamped onto the mask? Now when I remove that, voila, the leaves look like they're coming out of the pot. So there you go, there's a little trick for you. Now we want to also stamp, oh, why am I closing that? We need that still. We want to also stamp the little um, twine or string around the pot. And because it's photopolymer, we can see that really well to line that up. There we go. Beautiful. Now it's got a little string tied around it. Really cute. Oh, you like that tip, Tina Marie? Awesome. Oh, hey, Megan. Great to see you. Thank you for joining me today. How's the weather up there, Megan? It's dreary here today. It's been so windy and cold and raining. It's really, really miserable and it's not helping my tiredness. <laughs> it's making me feel more tired. All right, so I actually stamped one earlier because I wanted to make sure that the ink had dried really well. So this is the one, this is the one I prepared earlier. <laughs> and, um, oh, the other thing is too, we need to stamp some of our little flowers. So let me grab another scrap. I've just got a scrap piece here of cardstock. I put that ink pad away again, didn't I? So when you are stamping your flowers, just another little tip, we're gonna punch them out with our um, small balloon punch. But when you punch it, be sure to check which way up the flower is sitting because if I punch these flowers at an angle, then I, sorry, if I stamp them at a funny angle, and then I go to try and get my punch in there, you're trying to sort of manipulate your punch to try and get that around your image. So if you just make sure which way up the petals are, and this one is um, uh, asymmetric pretty well, I think, is that the right word? I don't know if that's the right word, but um, I know that that top petal is going to be pointing up that way. So then I'll just stamp a whole heap of these along the bottom here. And we actually need um, six, so then I'll do some more up the side. Oh, I've got extra ink on my um, block just then. I wasn't watching what I was doing. I was too busy talking. There we go. Okay, so when I go to punch them now, when I go to punch them, 
my punch will line up beautifully. Now I'm not going to punch them just yet because we're going to color them first, but can you see what I mean? My punch is going to line straight up with them like that and then I'll go around the page like that. Okay, so always a good thing when you're using punches, check which way, if you're punching a um, like a floral shape or one that coordinates with a stamp, make sure which way your punch is up. Okay, so let's now um, start our coloring and I've got my little flowers here from earlier. Okay, so we are going to start off with our, so we're using our watercolor pencils. Let's bring them in. Actually, we don't need this now. We can remove that. Bring in our pencils and we've got our aqua painter there. All right, so our flowers, uh, let's start with them. They're going to be really easy. We're going to be coloring them in Melon Mambo and it's really, really easy. You just color away and because these are watercolor, you don't have to be super precious about your coloring. You can basically just scribble in those petals. And I'm pushing fairly hard because I want them to be um, very deep in color. But if you don't want them so deep, you can just go a bit lighter with them. And I'm not even coloring all the way to the end because I'm gonna use my Aqua Painter. I'm gonna blend these down into a watercolor finish. So you can just use these watercolor pencils just on their own without watercoloring. They're, they do um, give you a really nice finish because they're a very soft, um, lead. well, it's not a lead. It's, I don't know, what do you call that in the pencil? It's not a lead when it's not a lead pencil, is it? What is it called? I guess it's a type of an ink or a dye, but they are really, really soft. So they do give a lovely finish, these ones. But of course, we are going to make them into watercolors. So, and you can actually do highlighting with watercoloring as well with watercolor pencils. So you can go in with another color and add additional highlighting, which I'm probably not going to fuss fuss with too much today. But um, I do do that a lot on other projects when I use my watercolor pencils. Um, Oh, it's really muggy up there today, is it, Megan? Ah, oh, you had storms over the weekend too. Yeah, we had them down here too. And I was speaking to my aunt and uncle over in Mildura and they said that they had storms over there too. I think there's storms everywhere over the weekend. Um, oh, hey, Jenny, great to see you. How has my day been? My day has been pretty good. Pretty tiring, but I've got a few things done. Didn't get everything done that I had planned, but that's okay. The day hasn't ended yet. So what have we got? Five there. We need one more. So let's do this one here. So I'm going to do all my colouring first, and then I'm going to do all my water colouring with my um, water painter. There we go. Okay, so our flowers are coloured. And we'll come in with the water painter a bit later. Let's finish these ones off. Um, I am actually just today, Jenny, using the thick Whisper White. I'm not using watercolour paper. You could. You could use watercolour paper if you wanted to. But um, just using thick Whisper White today. Just when you are using um, the ordinary cardstock, you just have to be careful not to lay down too much water and not to go over the image too many times because otherwise the, the cardstock can start to break down and, and start peeling. So you just have to go a bit carefully when you're just colouring with um, standard cardstock. Um, Sorry, Megan, I'm just reading your other message there. I just saw it. You got home and the car said the temperature was 30 degrees at 4 p.m. Oh, wow. So it's really warm and muggy up there. Ah, wow. Okay, and down in Jenny, Jenny's got the contrast down in Tassie. It's 16 down there. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what the temperature is here today, but it's cold. Whatever it is, it's cold. All right, so we are going to be using the um, Bermuda Bay for the pot. Now, on the pot, um, you'll notice that there is this shading here, okay? So usually where the, the stamps show us where there's shading, we know that that's where it's going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go heavier over on this side where that shading is. 
and then I'm just going to go lighter with the rest of my pot. You can always go back in and add more color if you wish. Um, however, working on ordinary paper. Oh, the other paper that is great for water coloring is our shimmery white paper. It is great for water coloring. Um, it's really thick and with that shimmer, in it, it's a different makeup um, to our standard cardstock and it holds the water really well. So I was actually toying between using that and the Thick Whisper White. All right, so I'll just give that a little bit more depth in color on this side. There we go, done. And now we're going to use our old olive for the leaves. So you can see how easy these pencils are to work with. And as you can see, I am not coloring precisely. I mean, I am staying, trying to stay in the lines, but I'm not coloring them really precisely because you don't have to because you're going to be water coloring them. In fact, this one is getting really, really blunt. I probably need to sharpen this one. Okay, I might actually need to get out my fine tip water brush too because I just noticed these petals are quite fine. Not sure how the thick tip is going to go with this one. So all of these products can be purchased in my online store. So if you're looking for my online store, you can go to my blog, mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com and you can click on the shop tab at the top of the page there and that'll take you straight through to... Um, my online store where you can look for these products there and remember to use my host code if you are shopping with me so that um, I can send you a thank you gift okay there we go now the background is going to be um, blue but I'm only going to go lightly with the blue in the background because I'm using um, thick whisper white and I don't want it to buckle too much so I'm just going to go really lightly and this is the um, Pacific point so I'm just going really lightly with this and I'm not even sure how what sort of finish I'll get on this because I don't normally do backgrounds on the thick whisper white I normally do that if I'm using the shimmery white cardstock or if I'm using the watercolor paper so we'll see how we go we've got a spare one there if need be if we need to go again we'll bring that down here all right and then we're just going to give this pot a little bit of grounding so I'm just using a little bit of early espresso just to give a little bit of shadow around that pot just to ground it a little bit. You don't want it floating up in the air. It needs to be grounded. There we go. And we'll just bring that blue down a little bit more to meet that. And then at the bottom, we're gonna have our sentiment. All right, so here comes the fun part. Let's go back to our flowers first. Set that one aside and we'll color in our flowers. Now, when you're using your water painter, um, these tops just screw off. Now they these particular ones, they unscrew in the opposite direction to the not way we normally do it. So if you're trying to unscrew it and you're thinking, it's not, un it's not coming undone, what's going on? Just try twisting it in the opposite direction. So it's twisting anti-clockwise. And you just fill it up with ordinary tap water um, to the line. Don't go past the line, otherwise you might end up with it flooding everywhere when you put the lid on. And then to get started, you just give a gentle squeeze. And I usually test mine on the back of my hand. Now this brush is quite dry. I haven't used this one in a while. So I'm just giving this a really good squeeze to get that water flowing. And let me grab, I actually don't have, I usually have paper towel nearby, but I just have a chucks at the moment. So I'll use my chucks. I always keep that in my trolley all the time. Just get that water flowing. There we go. So now I can feel that wet on my hand, but you don't want it too, too wet because you don't want to flood your project. Okay, and then you just 
are blending down. Let me just move that, move those over so you can see. You're basically just wetting down that ink that you've just laid down. And that just gives you that soft watercolor finish. So rather than having the harsh um, colored lines, that just becomes a really nice soft watercolor effect. And it's super easy to do. Anyone can do this. It's super, super easy. There we go. So that's one. And now we'll do the other ones. In fact, I'm going to grab my fine tip one because this is actually finer than I expected. This one's also now dry. <laughs> These two I haven't used. Oh, there we go. That one ran a lot quicker. And if it gets too wet, just dab it off onto a clean chucks or onto a piece of paper towel. And then that's better. Now I've got better control because it's a little bit finer. Usually if I'm using large, if I'm doing large areas, I'll use the larger tip. Um, smaller areas, I use a smaller tip. But this one's actually ended up a bit um, smaller, like more fine detail than I was expecting. So... And as your tip starts to dry out, just give it another squeeze just to blend that down. And I'm not sure if you can see the difference there between the two. See how it's just sort of softened those colours a little bit so it's not as harsh. And then I'm not worrying about the middle so much because we're going to put some um, embellishment there in the middle. And we are going to punch these out with our small bloom punch as well. So I love that in this stamp set, it has all the different, um, oh, what do you call them? Well, you've got the, the pot, you've got the basket, and you've got the vase. So um, vessels is the word. You've got all these different vessels to hold your flowers. So, um, yeah, I really want to do a basket too, actually. I think that would be really cute. But that little basket reminds me of a picnic basket. But it would be lovely, a lovely little basket for picking flowers as well. Makes me think of being out in, the, not that I've ever done this, but it makes me, I think I've seen it on a movie or something. Um, you know, being out in the woods, uh, picking wild flowers and putting them in your basket. And, you know, I have these visions in my mind of probably what I've seen on movies. Um, just in a peaceful place with a, you know, lovely little creek running through and... Um, picking wildflowers and putting them in my little basket. That's that's what comes to my mind when I think about flowers in this basket. <laughs> um, oh, the temperature's 15 here, is it, Chitska? Oh, thank you. That's cold today. That's like a winter's day. Oh, my goodness. I haven't poked my nose out the door. I did let the dog out for the to go to the toilet earlier, but I didn't go out after her. I just... um stayed inside and kept an eye on her through the window <laughs> all righty so there's our flowers done so we're going to punch them out in a moment there we go all right so they're all ready now between colors make sure you give your brush a bit of a clean just like you would doing any sort of water coloring um, so just brush it off till it's clean check it on your paper that's all good and then I'm going to do the leaves next and then I'll do the pot. And for the pot, I'll probably... Oh, now I'm squeezing too much water while I'm talking. I'll probably use the, um, the larger brush for the pot because it's a much larger area and also for the background as well. Okay, so the um, watercolour pencils are great to take with you when you go on holidays too. So if you're travelling, um, you could even stamp some images before you go and take those stamped images with you and colour them as you're travelling. Um, or if you get travel sick like I do and you have to watch where you're going, then colour them when you get there. I can't uh, do any fine work or anything like that when I'm travelling. I've always got to watch where I'm going. Or obviously, if I'm in a plane, I can't watch where I'm going, but I've got to keep my head up or try to go to sleep, one or the others. <laughs> I don't travel so well. What about everyone else? Do you like to do something when you're traveling, either in the car, obviously, if you're a passenger, not if you're the driver, or do you prefer just to watch where you're going? 
Whenever we travel in the car, I've always got to watch where I'm going or go to sleep. Otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeless. I can't read, I can't be on my phone, I can't, yeah, I've just got to watch where I'm going. I've always been like that. All right, so let's change to our larger brush this time. All right, so I'm going to just check if that's still wet. Yep, I'm going to start with the darker side first because I'm going to draw over some of that color into, and you'll probably be able to tell more with the pot um, that the with, that the effect has changed. And in fact, I'm going to show you before I do the bottom part of the pot, so you can see. There, if I hold that up now, can you see the difference between the top of the pot where I've done the water coloring and the bottom where I haven't blended it down yet? Can see the difference? So it gives that beautiful effect there with the water coloring. Makes it look so much more um, realistic, I think, too. So I'm just drawing that color across from where I went, uh, where I colored it really heavy over where the shadows would be. We also have um, blender pens as well, which blend, they have a particular type of ink in them that blend the um, watercolor pencils. They also do blend the um, inks. And um, yeah, they're really good too, but you just have to be careful with them not to overwork them on ordinary cardstock because they do peel. The, the um, tip on them is much firmer than a water brush. And so they do um, peel the cardstock quite quickly. So you've got to be really careful. All right, so I'm going to now do the shadow at the bottom. I love the effect that the shadows give with water coloring. I think they're awesome. There we go. And now we'll do the background. We're going to do that blue black blue background. And as I said, I don't normally use the pencils on ordinary. Excuse my chair squeaking. This Chair. I've got a um, cushion in the back of my chair for my back and every time I move on it, it squeaks. It's quite annoying. Um, yeah, so I don't normally use normal cardstock, like thick whisper white cardstock when I'm doing watercolouring. I tend to use a watercolour paper. but So it might be a little bit more streaky. You do get um, different effects on the different types of papers. So if you're using shimmery white paper or you're using watercolor paper or you're using um, the standard or the thick whisper white paper on every type of paper, you will get a slightly different finish with your watercolor pencils and even with your watercolor inks as well. Um, so yeah, so try it out and um, see what different effects you get and see what you like because everybody likes something different. But I do like this. It's giving us sort of the effect of, um, you know, clouds in the sky as well. But it is absorbing into the cardstock quite quickly as I'm painting it down with the water. There we go. Make sure I got all of that. But we don't want to overwork it either because we don't want the cardstock to start peeling. There. Not too bad. So it's, it has sort of stayed a little bit streaky on the um, Thick Whisper White. But, oh, hi, Diane. Just saw you. No worries. Yes, I haven't finished yet. I'm just doing some watercolouring. So, yeah, so you'll notice it's a bit more streaky on the um, Thick Whisper White. But um, I kind of like that effect too because it looks like the clouds in the sky. So, yeah, quite happy with that. All right, so now let's set that one aside to dry and we can punch out our flowers so we can get them ready. So we'll just line them up with our small balloon punch. Oop, get that in the right spot. Trying to make sure that I've got an even white space around the outside of those flowers. And we're going to double these up so they're going to be layered. Uh, uh, <laughs> three. 
I'm being quite particular with how I'm lining them up so that's why it's just taking me a bit of time. Four, turn this one around. Oh, that means I've got to turn my punch around. That's right, because I punched it up the right way. Oh, no, that's not right. There we go. I just turned that around so it was easier for me to hold it. <clears throat> and now this one, which way have I done this one? Oh, this one I didn't stamp up the right way. Which way did I do this? Oh, this way. Goes this way, that's right. I just stamped it along the end, not along the long edge. I was thinking, wait, what did I do with stamping that one? I was telling everyone to be so careful about which way they stamped it. That's <laughs> because I stamped it across that way. Alrighty, so there's all our little flowers. Now, an ex ex added extra little thing, if you would like to, you can shape these flowers and you can use your stamp and pierce mat to do that as well. Now I've actually got, let me just grab, I've actually got a spare one because I used to do a lot of piercing and shaping. I haven't been doing as much lately, but my piercing and shaping mat, I don't know if you can see the difference. My one I've got labeled for piercing and shaping is quite um, cut up, whereas this one's nice and flat. So I keep this one just for my stamping and I'll use my other one for my shaping. But of course, if you only have one, just flip it over. Use one side for stamping and one side for piercing and shaping. And then that way you always make sure that you have a nice um, mat for what you need it for. Okay, now I'm going to use my take a pick tool with my stylus end, which I don't have on there. Let me just grab my little box. It's my little box that one of my beautiful team members made for me to store all my bits and pieces in for my take your pick tool. Isn't it beautiful? This um, paper has uh, retired now, but it was really beautiful. It was my favorite one, really pretty. Okay, so I'll just change the end. Whoops, that came right off. Change the end and I'm using the large stylus ball for my take your pick tool. And all I'm going to do is simply going to go round and round in a circle in the center of each of those flowers. And as you'll see, that causes the petals to lift up. So hopefully you can see that. Just makes the petals lift up, but without actually creasing them. So if you go round and round, in a circle on each of those. Because if you were to just try and bend them up, they will actually crease. But doing it this way, it lifts those petals, but it doesn't actually crease them. And here's a little tip, another little tip for you. A friend of mine from many years ago taught me this little tip. If you find your stylus sometimes becomes a bit dry when you're rubbing it on your cardstock. So what you can do is if you just run this stylus through your hair a couple of times, it actually picks up the oils from your scalp. It sounds really gross, but it works. And then um, obviously you wanna make sure your hair's not too super oily. And then it glides over the cardstock really well. There we go, done. So that's just an added little tip for you. A friend of mine from many years ago who was a very beautiful crafter, she told me that tip. Alrighty, so now we're gonna layer up these um, flowers. I am just gonna take them off this mat though because I don't wanna get any glue on this one. Um, you can use your silicon craft sheet or you can just do them on your paper, but I'm gonna use my silicon craft sheet. Oops, this is my stamping side. This is my glue side. And I am simply just going to dab a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue in the center of one of those flowers. I'm gonna take the other flower and I'm gonna lay it on top and I'm just staggering those leaves so that they, the ones underneath are poking through. Okay, and then you can use your stylus again. I just put that away. You can use your stylus again just to push that down. And if you need to, just twist those around so that you can see those other petals underneath. So we'll do that with each of the flowers. So I'll do that one and I'll put some glue on this one while I'm at it. 
Oh, I nearly put that lid onto my glue. <laughs> oh dear, told you I was tired today. Alrighty, so pop that on. Make sure we've got our petals lined up. Give it a little push with our stylus. And do the same with this one. So I used to do a lot of um, paper punch work. I used to do an awful lot of paper punch work. Um, it was very popular back in the day, about probably oh, 10, 15 years. Oh, no worries. That's okay, Tina Marie. That's okay. Um, yeah, so back in the day when it was really popular, I used to do heaps and heaps of um, punch art. All right, so now these are then going to layer onto our um, card here, but we're going to put everything together now. And, oh, we don't have a sentiment yet. We haven't done the sentiment. Okay, so let's do the sentiment before we put everything together. So I pulled out a few stamp sets and I'm deciding on which sentiment I would like to use on this one. Um, I thought maybe you made my day would be nice. Mm. I like this one. I can't begin to count all the times we've laughed together. That's a really nice one. I haven't used that one yet. Um, oh, this one's a nice one. I made you a card because you're worth it. Let's use that one. I really like that one. So this is the Here's a Card stamp set. And it's got lots and lots of different um, sentiments and greetings on it. But I like that one. Let's use that one. Um, and I don't even know if I've used it yet. Well, that particular stamp. I made you a card because you're worth it. Let's see if we can find that. Oh, here it is. Yes, I have. Because I've already put my sticker on. Yay. And that's going to fit just beautifully. So you can put it directly onto your, stamp it directly onto your um, piece here, which I'm going to do. Or if you wanted to, you could make a banner or a label to go across your card there. In fact, let's have a look and see. What have I got up here? That one, no, that's too big. Too big for the, um, the piece, that one. That one might be too big for the, that one's too big for the label. Yeah, we'll just go with that. We'll just go with it straight on there. You could even you. Oh, hang on a minute. Here's another idea. I do have my. Hmm. I've got my banner punches, so I've got that one, and I've got my new banners picker punch. So I could even use one of those, and we could put that on the end. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe this one. I like that one. So what I might do first is we'll try this. I'll stamp this on, I better put it on a block first. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Nope, that one's too small. Let's get a D block. Good old D block. D blocks are the most used block, I think. And I have so many of them. But then when I'm preparing for classes and things, I always seem to still run out of them. <laughs> uh, um. Thank you for my, oh, Jenny says, thank you for my lovely prize and the little card. Love them. Oh, you're very welcome, Jenny. I'm glad you love them. That's great. And I'm glad you got them. That's good. Uh, let me see. This size or this size. I've got a piece. Let's use this one. And I'll stamp that. And I'm going to just stamp that in the basic grey. So we'll keep everything the same. And then we can, um, oh, actually, you know what I should do first is I should work out the width of my banner. And I might cut a strip first. So let's see how high is this. This is, oh, they're in inches, aren't they? That's right. So this is just under half an inch. No, three quarters of an inch. So if I cut a strip of cardstock, wait, let me just put this away. Three quarters of an inch. I'll just cut a piece of cardstock with my trimmer. Three quarters of an inch, which is 1.9 centimeters. Is that right? I think that's right. I'm not good at converting centi uh, in centimeters to inches. I'm a centimeters girl. 
So let's see, then that should fit in. Oh yeah, that'll fit in there beautifully. All right. Now the trick is I've got to try and stamp my sentiment straight on here. And because then we can banner the ends then. All right, so I'm just going to pop it whereabouts about there. Let's see if I got it straight. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Wow, that's amazing. I never ever get them straight first go when I'm stamping on a live, on a banner that's already cut. So there you go. Having a good day today. <laughs> All right. So I think I'm going to use the, um, I like that bannered end. So we'll pop that in there and line that up. So that now fits beautifully in that groove because the grooves, um, there's three different size grooves in this punch. So it's half an inch, three quarters of an inch and one inch. And I'm just using the three quarters of an inch. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I used the wrong one. I thought I was using the other one. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that'll be good. And then that could even go. Yep, yeah, no, that'll be good. Then what you do. Okay, so I know it doesn't matter. They're both nice, Tina. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I meant I did mean to use the other one, but it's okay. So then what you can do if when you're don't throw away your little bit that you just punched out. Okay, you use this extra bit as a template. My daughter Amber taught me this very clever trick. So what you do is you work out how much room you want this end. So I've already punched that end. Then you work out how much room you want this end for there to be an even amount either side. And you line up that little piece that you've already punched out. And when you've got that in place, so then you can see where that, I'm not sure if you can see that. Oh yes, you can. So I've worked out that that's where I want it to go. Then get your pencil, put a little mark there at the end of that. Okay, so I've popped a little mark down there at the edge of that piece. Then you're going to trim that with your trimmer at that mark. Giving you lots of little tips today. I'm going to trim that there. That was a very heavy pencil line mark, but that's okay. We're going to chop that anyway. Chop that off. Now, when I punch it, it should be punched at exactly the right spot now let me make sure i'm using the right banner this time yes this one make sure that they're both the same the same bannered end there we go and see then now it's in the middle you like that little trick with that little end bit so never throw away your little end bits keep them as a little guide <laughs> so there we go so and i'll i've actually Got that little edge because I must have tr turned it over when I trimmed it there we go all right and then we can just what we can do is we can mount that up on there beautiful yes I like that good okay so really simple layout so now what we're going to do is we're just going to adhere our designer series paper onto our card base and I have covered up my stamp and seal. There it is. Got all sorts of things going on here at the side of my desk. I'm glad you can't see the side of my desk. <laughs> it was really tidy before I started. Really, it was. <laughs> I had it all nice and tidy on the weekend. Oh, very sticky. All right, so then we're just going to put this piece of paper down. Now, as I said, this paper... This designer series paper is 13.7 centimeters by 9.3. And we're just going to line that up with an even border around the edges. There we go. Now we're gonna mount this up. I'm just wondering if I put that there too, and then we've got to mount up, we're gonna mount up our flowers as well. Should I just adhere that flat and then mount everything else on top? Otherwise, we're going to have two layers of dimensionals. But I don't mind two layers of dimensionals. I quite like two layers of dimensionals. But I'm just thinking because that's a bit curly-whirly. 
let's see. That one's going to go up there, that one about there. I think I might mount it up. I think I'd like to have it mounted up. What do you think? Mounted or not mounted? I think mounted. I like things mounted up. And we still need to add some ribbon. So hang on, before we mount that up, let's work out what we're going to do with our ribbon first. So I have got lots of choices. I pulled out all of these ones that I thought might um, go. And I've also got some twine as well, or some linen trim, I should say. So I'm not sure which one. I haven't used this one yet. I thought maybe I might crack this one open today and we'll see if this one matches at all because I really like this one. This one's from the um, mini catalogue and it is the, what is it called? Embroidered ribbon. Very pretty. I kind of thought that might go with the theme. It's really pretty. Now I'm not sure if I wrap it. Can't really wrap it because my sentiment's going to be there. Unless I have it showing just under my sentiment, I could do that. Could have that showing under there, but then you kind of lose it. Maybe a bow. Let's see what it would look like in a bow. This is super soft, this ribbon. This is beautiful. I don't know why I hadn't opened this yet. This is really soft and beautiful. Has anybody used this ribbon before? The end one matches the dots. Ah, oh, it does too, Tina. Good idea. Yes, maybe I'll get that one. Hang on, I need to just tie my tie my knot my bow first on this one because this is beautiful ribbon. So super soft. That's cute, but is that too heavy? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe I'm going to need to mount it up first. I don't think I'm going to wrap any ribbon around because that's why I just didn't want to mount it yet in case I wrapped ribbon around. But I don't think I'm going to be able to because we've got the sentiment down here. So let's layer this up first. We'll put this on dimensionals. The higher the better, you reckon, Megan? Yes. I like a lot of dimension on my projects too. So I'm just going to change the tip for my take your pick tool so that I can use the pokey pokey tool. It's actually called a paper piercer, but I like to call it a pokey pokey tool. And I'm going to use that to pick up my dimensionals. Now, because this is um, ordinary, this is um, thick whisper white, and it's a little bit bowed from adding all that water, I'm going to make sure I add additional dimensionals this time so that it sits nice and straight and it doesn't go all warped when I adhere it down. So if you think, oh my goodness, this woman is crazy, look at all those dimensionals. There is method to my madness. Because yes, there is a lot of dimensionals, but it's because the cardstock has warped a little bit with the water. So all good. Oh, I can't see the bottom of the card. Sorry, Jenny. Working a bit low. I'll move everything up a little bit. Actually, I'll move my whole mat up. Just give me a sec. I'll just get these backings off here and I can move up this whole mat. There we go. Is that better? If I put that in the middle, hopefully you can see. I wasn't looking on my camera. There we go. Can you see now? All right, so we're just going to pop this straight down in the middle. Very, very easy layout. It's just layer upon layer, just with that nice border around the edge. Make sure that that's straight. Yep, there we go. Good. Oh, you use that many all the time, Megan? Oh, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> okay. And then now we've got our sentiment. I'm wondering about whether or not to add a bit of colour around the edge of our sentiment. Or perhaps should I add another piece of... Because the sentiment looks very bland on there, doesn't it? I'm wondering if I should stamp it onto another piece of the um, So Saffron. Maybe I should do that, do you think? Let's put our flowers on first. I'll keep thinking on that one. 
All right, so flowers are going up on dimensionals as well. Um, where is my take a picture? Right there. There we go. Sponge it. Yes, good idea. Okay, I will sponge it. What colour, Megan? Oops, I've got my daubers right in front of me. Should I do it just in the grey or do you think I should do it in one of the coordinating colours that I used for the, um, for the, in the design? What colour do you think? All right, so we're going to pop that one up about there. Let's see. I'll get this one in place first and then we'll pop this one up here. Yep. So what colour should I sponge around the sentiment, Megan? What do you think? There we go. And then we'll pop this one up in here or up. Up there, perhaps. Maybe in the saffron. Yeah. Oh, that one's a bit high. You can't quite see those leaves. Oh, that, that'll be okay. All right. Let me pull out some so saffron. That will be in my warm colours, won't it? All right. Let's see. So saffron. Oh, look. It was the first one I put my hand on. How clever is that? And I will grab my ink from my ink tray. All right, so we've got the flowers on. We're going to put some centers on them in a minute. And I'm just going to daub a little bit of ink around the edge of this, which will just lift it off that white base. I love sponging around the edges. It's actually my, I think it's my most favorite technique. I do it on almost everything. I don't know why I didn't think to do it on this one, Megan. You're ahead of me today. Good job. <laughs> I told you I was tired. Not thinking straight today. There, that should make a bit of a difference. Hey, that'll lift it up. Beautiful. Oh, you're loving it, Tina Marie. Awesome. So glad. Okay, so then, ah, yes, Megan, good job. Look at that. That's going to look so much nicer. All right, let's put some dimensionals onto the back of this one. Thanks, Megan. Pop one in the middle, one either side. Alrighty. Then we're just going to simply lay that over like so, making sure that's lined up on the bottom because we've got a straight edge on a straight edge, so we need to make sure that's straight. There we go. Oh, cute. All right, let's put our centers on. Now, I've got a few centers here to, uh, a few centers, a few. Um, oh, you've been doing it a lot lately, have you? <laughs> oh, since watching me, awesome. That's great, Megan. Um, a few um, embellishments to choose from. So I was thinking about the enamel dots because they match beautifully, but then I thought, well, and they're, they're shinier. The playing with pattern resin dots they're beautiful too, but they're much flatter and they are a bit brighter. I think this color matches better. Then I also thought about the gold glitter enamel dots. They're really pretty too, but let's do a pop of yellow, I think. I think we'll go with the, um, the in color enamel dots. Whoops, there we go. Alrighty. Oh, look, we've got a little lonesome one down here. Let's use that one there. Come on, up you come. We'll put those down in the middle of the flowers. You just have to be really careful when you're lifting these ones off the backing. You have to do it quite gently with these ones so that they don't lift off the base um, colour piece because that can happen if you're a little bit rough with these ones. Just got to treat them really gently. There we go. Oh, that's so cute. Look at that. So pretty. All right, so now we need to add our ribbon. So we've got to decide. So we've got that one, which would look really cute, but maybe it's a bit heavy because you don't want to take away from the pot. So maybe it's beautiful ribbon, but maybe it's just a little bit too heavy on there. So let's check out the other ones. So Tina Marie liked this one. And as well as that too, I've got this beautiful gingham one, which I haven't used yet too. So I was quite excited about that one. So put that one to the side. This is the polka dot tulle ribbon. This might make a really beautiful 
finish on this card. So we'll tie a little bow with that one. Um, oh, you love it too, Julie. Awesome. And Diane does too. Oh, thanks everyone. Yes, too heavy, isn't it? Yeah, I thought so too, but it's beautiful. I have to find a use for that ribbon. So lovely. This tool, I love this tool. I've used it so much, but tying bows is a little bit challenging. You've just got to be really patient because of the, um, the little flocked polka dots. They sort of get caught as you're trying to tie your bow. So you've got to do it really carefully. You could, I could have just done a little bow knot actually. That would have been easier. I've been doing quite a few of them lately on my um, projects. I do like a good bow knot. I actually got that idea from um, Connie Stewart in the States, in the United States. She does bow knots a lot on her projects. And I thought, oh, that is so much easier. And I love the look. So let's just oh try and get this little... That one's still a bit too big. Be all right if I was tying a big bow, but because I'm trying to tie a little bow, it doesn't want to play. There, how about that? We'll twist that bit over. Still a bit big on that side. There, what about that? What do you think? It's that one. That's very soft and delicate. It's actually hard to see it, to be honest. It's a bit hard to see that one. I could put it down there, no. So I need something up here, I think. Mm, what do you think? This ribbon is current, yes, Tina. This is the Whisper White um, polka dot tool ribbon and it is current, yep. All of the things that I use on my um, Facebook Lives are current product. Oh, it's your favourite. Is it the polka dot, Megan? Yeah, it's really pretty. No, Rose doesn't think that one. I'm going to try this one, the gingham. I haven't used this yet, but I absolutely love it. I was a bit late in getting this one. I didn't get this one straight away when it came out. Um, but I've always been a sucker for gingham. I just love it. How about this one? All right, let's see. Oh, yes. I think we have a winner. Look at that. What do you think? Obviously with shorter tails. That one, I like that. What do you think about that one? Ties in that yellow, doesn't it? I do like that one. What do you think about the gingham? Yes, Tina Marie says yes. Oh, Tina Johnson said maybe the twine. Yeah, I haven't tried the twine yet. Oh, yes, Julie says yes. Tina says yes. Oh, everyone's saying yes. Okay, we've got a winner. Yay. All right, let's cut this one. So trim up that little tail there. Beautiful. Ah, oh, yeah, I like that. That's pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now, question. When you do the ends of your... And I don't even know if you'll be able to explain this in writing in as you're typing when you do the ends of your bow right because amber and i do them i seem to do them differently every time but amber does them opposite to me when you trim the ends do you trim this way that i have it with the longer part of the tip on the outside or do you trim with the longer part of the tip on the inside so at the opposite angle does that make sense let me know which way you trim your ribbon because Amber and I do it differently every time. And we both have different opinions. Now I don't even know if this is the way I normally do it or if I've done it Amber's way. <laughs> I'm not sure. And she's not joining us today because she's um, spending time with her sister today. Because Brookie's home from work today. All right, so we'll just use a glue dot for our bow. And we're going to pop that little bow up in the corner. And that's going to be really cute. Look at that. Oh, I love that ribbon. How cute is that? So pretty. Beautiful. There we go. Done. You trim the opposite way, Megan. Okay. Yes. I see. Oh, you seal all the ends. So you don't trim. Do you keep yours just straight, Tina Marie? Um, 
Or you fold it in half and then cut. Yes, I used to do that too. Some of the ribbons are difficult to do that with though. Um, some of the finer ones are difficult to do the fold in half one. Actually, where's that bit that I just chopped off? Did I throw that in the bin? No, there it is. Let's see if I can do it with this one. Hang on, I'll do the, I'll cut the end straight. Let's see if we can do it with this one. Fold it in half and then trim. Oh yeah, and you get the point. You get the, um, the, like, the little bannered end, but I didn't do that straight. Look, because I've got one end that's longer. I don't know if you can see that. On my terribly dry hands, all that sanitizer, it's not good for our skin, is it? All right. So anyway, there we go. So there we have my little card. Oh, you keep them straight. Okay. So we all do it differently. There. So um, there we have my little card for today. So I hope you liked that. So I gave you some little tips about masking. Um, I gave you some little tips about um, shaping your flowers and using the stylus tip. And remember if, what to do if your stylus gets a bit too dry when you're rubbing it on your cardstock. <laughs> um, is that color one of the in colors? Um, this one is the, yes, it is. Julie, it's the bumblebee. It's bumblebee gingham. Is it gingham? Yeah, bumblebee gingham ribbon and bumblebee is one of the in colors but it matches really like really beautifully with the so saffron <clears throat> excuse me i'm getting croaky again thank you so much thank you all for your help and thanks megan for the tip on the um banner as well that really made it that's really beautiful okay great i'm really happy with that but as you can see everyone you only need to have a really basic plain layout and once you put all those other elements on top, you can make it into such a beautiful card. So you don't need to do all these fussy um, layouts and things like that. You can just keep the background really simple and then you make the focal image really pop. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't need to be difficult. It doesn't need to be rocket science. You can just keep it really simple. All right, all right, so I'm going to now flip the camera back up so I can say goodbye to you all in person. So let me just do that. Give me two secs while I just adjust all my cameras. Okay, nearly there, and I'll adjust my lighting. I really need a second set of lighting, I reckon. It'd be so much easier. All right, now did I flip my cameras? I don't know if I did. Let's see. Ah, oh, hang on. There we go. <laughs> now we're around the right way. Okay. Yes, I did flip them and then I flipped them again. <laughs> so, oh dear. There we go. Okay, so there's my little card for today. Let me just move over a little bit. I've got my camera. I'll put it at a funny angle. There we go. Is that better? There we go. So there's my little card. So thank you all so much for joining me to make that. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I think I need to make a few of those. <laughs> um, so any of those products that you might be um, thinking that you liked, if you, if it's the watercolour pencils or perhaps the stamp set, um, remember that all of those are available in my online store. Now, if you've got a really long wish list, which a lot of us crafters do have, just remember that you can actually purchase the starter kit because the starter kit, you can choose $235 worth of product, but you only pay $169. So it's a great, great um, offer and it's the best offer in the catalog actually. And you also get free shipping on that starter kit too. And then after you get your starter kit, you get a discount on all of your future purchases while you remain active. So that's a 20% discount. And then you can build that up to 25% over time as well. So keep that in mind. And if you would like more information on that, then please let me know. Um, and I'd love to um, give you more information about that starter kit. And there's no lock-in contract with the starter kit. If you purchase the starter kit and then you get everything that you want, that's fine. 
not a problem you don't need to stick around you can just go back to being a customer but if you'd like to give it a try for a few months then you're also welcome to do that because there's no actual lock-in contract or time period for that so if you'd like more information please let me know um, but yeah so otherwise remember next Tuesday we've got the joy to the world where's my flyer oh I've put it down and I've put everything on top of it. We've got the Joy to the World um, paper pumpkin kit. Hang on, I'm getting it. <laughs> I put my catalogue on top of it and then my trimmer on top of that. <laughs> the Joy to the World um, paper pumpkin kit is coming out next Tuesday. So look out for that. Uh, that's going to be absolutely awesome. And then also to the Curvy Celebrations is also coming out next Tuesday. And we've got that beautiful... Um, all those beautiful stamps so we've got the beautiful stamp set with the coordinating dies and then we've got the christmas one as well with the coordinating um, papers so they are really beautiful and they're available from next tuesday as well and remember currently we've got the designer series paper special so 15 percent off selected designer series papers there's 15 different packs that are on special so 15 to choose from and they are only available on special until um, Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 31st. So make sure to stock up on all your designer series paper while that is on special and grab yourself a bargain. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, it was so great to have you all here. Oh, you can't, can't wait to order it. Awesome, Tina Marie. I'm so glad. Oh, you're welcome, Megan. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a great week too. Oh, thanks, Rose. Now you need that punch. Yes, the small bloom punch. This is a great little um, floral punch. It's so versatile. You can use it for lots of different things. And you can use it just on your own, just with cardstock too. Or you can use it with designer series paper and punch out patterned flowers. Um, or you can use it with the stamp set as well. So it's super, super versatile, this one. Um, and also too, it's a smaller punch than some of our other ones. So it fits really well in your hand. Um, and also too, it's got that locking mechanism so you can lock it down to store it flat. So really, really great. I love all of the Stampin' Up! punches. In fact, I've got nearly all of them. I think there's only two that I don't have, which is the Apple and the Snowman, because I thought I probably wouldn't use them, but all the other punches I have. So I've got a lovely collection. So it keeps me busy. <laughs> oh, well, I hope you all have a really great week this week. And I look forward to seeing you all again next week at four o'clock. And remember, next week I will be, well, I am planning on um, using the new Curvy Celebration Suite to, or sorry, products to um, make something special for you for next week. So tune back in next week at four o'clock on Monday um, and come and see what I've got for you then. But until then, I hope you have a great week and take care and keep safe. And I'll look forward to seeing you all then. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye.